Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's masterclass on building an enterprise service management with multiple instances on Service Desk Plus Cloud. My name is Nikhil. I'm from the product support team, and I'm going to be the presenter for today. In today's uh, webinar, we are going to talk about ESM, which is the Enterprise Service Management. We are going to see how an ESM can be set up, what are the different components an ESM can have, how do you set up instances, and um, how you could integrate these instances with the help of custom menu and custom functions. And we are also going to talk about our uh, AI assistant. So why do you need ESM or uh, the enterprise service management in an organization? The ESM allows you the luxury of having multiple service desk instances across various departments your organization might have so that you could uh, organize and work on different services effectively and separately. So let's say you have uh, or you are a part of an IT company. So you might have different departments such as IT, HR, finance, right, security, etc. Or if you are running an educational institution, you might have various uh, departments in your educational institution too. For example, a junior school, a high school, or a senior school. Or in case of a medicine or a healthcare related organization, you might have a couple of departments there as well, where you could handle your general cases or your emergency cases separately in uh, two different instances, right? So ESM gives you the luxury of having multiple instances and having uh, a different set of process integrated uh, for each and every single uh, instance, right? And you could also restrict the level of access to these particular instances. For example, if you have IT, HR, and a finance desk, right? You would not want the tickets to uh, mingle between all these three, right? So if you have uh, a HR instance and all the HR related queries are coming in, you would not want a finance technician to go through all of this or to view all these uh, requests. You would not want an IT technician as well to view all these requests, right? So to segregate the requests which are coming in and to integrate different processes, different request life cycles, different workflows within a specific instance, you can have separate instances for each of these departments in your organization. And you could restrict the access to relevant people for these instances, right? And you also get to have or customize a unified service desk portal. So uh, with that, let me take you to the application and let's uh, see how you could build uh, an ESM or an enterprise service desk with the ESM portal. So I'm going to log into uh, the, tech, the uh, product as an SD admin, right? So this is our new UI and we have logged in as an SD admin. So on the top left corner, you would have uh, the instances button or the nine dots which represent the instances button. So when you click on instances at any point of time, you'd be able to view the different instances which are created or which your organization uh, offers, right? So if you are an organization admin in your Service Desk Plus portal, you could access the ESM directory from this section. So all you need to do is click on the nine dots on the top left corner, navigate all the way down to ESM directory. If you are an organization admin, you would have access to this. You could enter the ESM directory and the ESM portal would look like this. So this is uh, where you would start your ESM or your enterprise service management setup. So uh, when you click on proceed, you would, you would navigate to your first tab, which is organization details. So here you define your organization name, your location where your organization is located, a time zone which your organization follows, your primary contact and your uh, contact information of your organization along with your company's logo. So if you have a custom logo, you could click on change image, you could uh, pick an image from your PC and you would be able to upload this image and save or configure your company logo. So once your logo has been configured, it would be available on the top left corner in the ESM directory page 
or when you are in any instance on the top left corner when you click on the instances button you would be able to view the uh, organization logo right here in this section so that's how you configure your organization's details in your esm directory once that is done you could add or view the users who are a part of your organization so you could add new users or view existing users from this section and say for example if you have a couple of users who have forgotten their password you could navigate directly to the ASM directory to the user section go ahead and click on a specific user's name and click on change password so this allows you to set a password and sign out them from all the uh, all the devices which they're currently signed in as right so apart from this you can also go ahead and edit a particular user's uh, name and you'd be able to change the time zone in which they are viewing their instance in you could change their uh, language in which they are viewing their instance in you could change their country as well as a part of the users tab which is available in uh, services plus cloud in the esm directory uh, apart from this you could also uh, select users and add users to different instances so as and when you create multiple instances such as your it hr travel etc you could go ahead and configure these uh, uh, users within these instances so you, all you need to do is select the users click on add users to instance and uh, once you click on a specific instance name these users would be able to access that but that specific instance likewise if you want to remove users from a specific instance that is also possible so all you need to do is select the users click on remove users from instance and you could click on remove uh, i mean click on the instance name and the users would be removed from there so the next option which you have is verifying domains so a domain verification is needed in order to import users from your active directory or in order to uh, enforce saml authentication in your organization or even if you want to customize your url so for example this is our global url which is uh, sdpondemand.manageengine.com if you want to have a custom url for your organization for example my organization's name is zilka if i want to have my custom url as helpdesk.zilka.com i need to have zilka.com as my verified domain right here so you need to have a CNAME entry populated for your verified domains, which you are going to add right here. And once that is done, once you at least have one domain, you can configure your SAML authentication, or you could go ahead and uh, bring in users from the Active Directory. So like I had mentioned, you must have at least one verified domain uh, configured right here under verified domains in order to set up your SAML authentication. So once your verified domain is all set, you could configure your logout and login URLs, choose your certificate, and you'd be able to enforce SAML to your organization. So not just that, even uh, bringing in users from your Active Directory uh, can be done only if you have uh, at least one verified domain in your organization. So you could make use of the provisioning app if you're using a local AD. And uh, by making use of the provisioning app, you could bring in the users from your Active Directory and populate it within uh, separate instances in Service Desk Plus Cloud. So to do that, you need to have a domain verified as a prerequisite. So uh, the next option which we are going to see today is service desk instances. So uh, you could create n number of instances in your organization. So these are the list of instances I currently have. So at any point of time, if you want to uh, you know, go ahead and add a new instance, you could navigate to service desk instances come right here to this page and view the list of existing uh, instances which you own and if you want to create a separate uh, you know instance for a different help desk for example we have it hr housekeeping travel and facilities if i want to create a, a brand new instance uh, called a security instance right so i could go ahead and click on new instance right here and that's going to uh, ask me a few details such as the display name so i could give security right here and uh, i could give a description similar to how we have given descriptions in um, you know the other uh, instances 
So you could give a brief description on why you're creating this instance and who is you, who should be using this instance. And you could have a URL name right here. So as you can see, you have the uh, IT desk, you have HR for help configured as the URL names. You know, uh, likewise, you have facility for you for your other uh, instances. So this URL name is going to be populated when you navigate to an instance. On the URL bar, you would be able to find IT desk right here. So you need not worry about what value you give here because you'd be giving your end users your custom URL. And from there, the redirection is automatic as in when you click on a specific portal. So that shouldn't be a, a huge problem. So you could give any name right here. So you could, let's say, if you go uh, security help desk, right? And that's going to populate as my uh, URL name right here when my end users or when my technicians navigate to the security instance, right? So uh, let's navigate back to where we were. So we are going to create a new instance for security. I'm going to give my URL name and the uh, type can also be selected. So as of now, we have three different uh, types of help desk. One is IT, the other one is uh, facilities and HR. Uh, the configurations uh, between these three might vary slightly depending on the type of the uh, instance you are trying to create. For now, let's go with IT help desk and uh, let's proceed with the time zone. So I could define uh, the time zone where I'm located at and I could also define an instance owner for this particular instance. And this is where the access permission is located. So you could uh, define who should view this particular uh, instance or who should be accessing this particular instance. Instance. Should it be everyone in the organization or should it be just users with permission for this instance? Right? So uh, you need not want a travel uh, help desk technician or a facilities help desk technician to take a look at uh, critical requests which are coming in uh, based on your security. Right. So for that, if you want to have separate uh, workflows and separate uh, you know, uh, sets of RLCs for your uh, security instance or any instance for that matter, you could go ahead and uh, choose your access permissions from this section. So once you click on create, you'd be able to, um, you know, view the card of this instance of the security instance, similar to how we are viewing the travel and facilities. And once you, we are all set with this, you could go ahead and click on go to instance. So on clicking go to instance, you'd be navigated to your brand new instance, which you just created. And from there, you could set up who should be able to access this particular instance, as in you could type in your email addresses, or you could choose to add later. You could configure your mail server settings, or you could choose to configure them later. And when you click on let's start, that's going to take you to your brand new instance, which you have just created, right? So uh, under setup, you would have your users and permissions. So once you have a brand new setup or a brand new instance in your organization, you would uh, want to allow a few people to access it, right? So for that, you could navigate to uh, setup and users and permissions. And under requesters, you would have an option to import users. So you could click on import users and click on import from organization. So that's going to allow you uh, to view the list of uh, users who are, who are currently a part of your organization. And all you need to do is select the users you wish to import and click on import. So once they are imported or brought in as requesters, you could change them to technicians at any point of time by clicking on the change as technician icon. So on clicking change as technician, you would be navigated to the technician page where you could define your roles for your technician, right? So you could go ahead and choose a specific role for your technician. If you want to give organization privilege, you could go ahead and do that. So the organization admin would be the one who can access the ESM directory on the whole. So this was the option I was talking about earlier. So uh, once you go ahead and uh, convert a, a user as a technician, you could go ahead, give them uh, roles, um, assign them with roles and uh, create your technician profile right here. So when you navigate to technicians, um, you, would, you being a technician would be visible right here and the newly added, uh, newly converted technician would also be visible, right? So this is how you bring in users from various instances and you add various users from various uh, 
uh, instances and from the list of users who are available in your organization so that's about uh, configuring service desk instances uh, the next option or the last option in the ESM directory is manage portal. So this is where you can define your custom URL. So like I said, if you want to have a custom URL for your organization, you could have something like uh, servicedesk.zilka.com or helpdesk.zilka.com. And to have, uh, you know, uh, you should have a verified domain and that domain can be selected right here and you could give a subdomain for example you could give help desk right here and your zilka.com or your uh, organization's domain.com once it's verified you could choose from the drop down list and populate a cname entry and once that is done you could save and you should be all set with your custom url so that is how you uh, customize your organization's url and the next option which you have is uh, customizing your organization's portal. So when you land in um, as a, a requester or as a technician, when you log out and log in for the first time during the day, you would be navigated to this particular page, which is the ESM portal. So all the instances which your organization offers would be uh, uh, available in a unified display, in a, in a unified portal display right here. And uh, users, or technicians can go ahead and search for any item which is available in any of these instances or they could access the instance from this particular section depending on the permissions right so if you want to uh, go ahead and customize this page or the ESM portal you could go ahead and navigate to manage portal section in the ESM directory and click on customize organization portal so when you click on customize, uh, you would be able to change this particular background. You'd be able to add a logo for your uh, organization's landing page or your organization's ESM portal. And uh, you can also make changes to these wordings which are available right here, right? So for the purpose of this demo, I do have a, a, a predefined uh, code which I'm going to plug in and show you. So um, as you see, uh, we do have a logo. So if you have a URL which has your organization's logo, you could plug them here. Uh, and if you have uh, you know, your background available uh, in a URL, uh, you could go ahead and do that as well. If you have an image, you could plug in the URL and that's going to populate your URL in this particular section. So let's say uh, I have a HR or I'm building a HR portal. I could go ahead and type in um, my, my desired URL and that's going to change the image right here, right? So uh, that's about customizing the background for the ESM portal and uh, adding um, a logo for your ESM portal. So uh, you can also change this particular wording from this section. So if you have any, uh, HTML uh, developer in your organization, you could definitely seek help from them and uh, make a customized, uh, you know, uh, uh, changes to your ESM portal. So if you want to change uh, this particular wording, which is how can we help you, right? So you could directly navigate here and replace the wording from here. So if you want to call this as um, Zilka portals, you could do that as well, right? And if you want to change uh, these uh, wordings, which service desk do you need help with, right? So if you uh, want to customize the wording which is available here, you could also do that. So please choose your desired portal, right? You could have something like this as well. And you could click on save and publish and you could confirm the change. And as and when you uh, navigate to your uh, ESM portal, you would be able to view the changes um, you know, on your landing page or on your ESM portal page when you log in, right? So apart from this, you also have one other option, which is organization's preferred landing page. So if you want to uh, you know, uh, land all your organization users in this portal, which is the ESM portal, you could choose this option, which is set ESM portal as default URL. Or if you want to, uh, you know, want your users to directly navigate to your IT help desk without landing in this page, you could choose one as your, um, you know, preferred landing page, and that's going to 
you know populate uh, the IT help desk whenever a user or a technician logs in right so that can also be customized so this is how you can build uh, your ESM and this is how you could uh, configure your various portals in your ESM directory so once you have all these portals how do you integrate all these portals and make sure that you know your work is being done so you might have a situation where you have uh, multiple department users or multiple instance users uh, to work on one specific case or one request right so say for example we have an, an employee onboarding request and there are several tasks associated to an employee onboarding so when an when an employee is being hired, there, sh there should be uh, an onboarding process. There should be um, an orientation process, and then um, there are some IT related tasks such as you know setting up their email addresses, setting up their um, AD accounts, uh, making sure the, the desired uh, or the required softwares are given access, etc. Right. Uh, also, there is another. Uh, team which is involved uh, which is facilities uh, which could uh, which would uh, organize the seating location for the user etc right so setting up the workplace uh, would be one of the tasks which is defined for the facilities help desk so uh, let's take a quick look um, through the application on how this particular use case can be achieved in service desk plus cloud so we are currently logged in to the HR help desk. So I'm going to create a quick um, service request. So I'm going to choose my service catalog and I'm going to choose my service catalog as a request catalog as human resource. And uh, this is an employee onboarding request, right? So uh, let's say we are going to hire James today. So uh, let's choose a requester name. So I'm going to choose Dave as my requester name and this is an employee onboarding so I'm just going to leave the subject as is so it is employee onboarding and uh, we have a, a dynamic form which we have as per this uh, use case as per our employee onboarding use case with several tasks so uh, we have a you know an asset configuration task an email configuration task which is uh, it related you have an orientation and uh, adding users as a part of the hr management system as uh, uh, as a part of the hr uh, related tasks and you also have a setup workspace which is uh, a facilities task right so uh, when a when a user uh, creates a request or when a hr hires a uh, a new hire uh, using the HR portal a new request for an employee onboarding is being created right so uh, let's give the name right here for the new hire so or, all right so this is uh, let's say a permanent employee name for this uh, new hire is James right so uh, let's navigate uh, down and go ahead and click on add request so this is uh, a dynamic form which is being uh, you know which is being used in this particular use case which is the employee onboarding use case so we have done uh, another master class for uh, the service uh, for, for the service request and how you could create such dynamic forms so you could um, refer to the previous masterclass videos to know more about how you could configure such uh, dynamic forms and how you could make your onboarding process or your hiring process easier for example right so uh, back to our use case so we have uh, a new hire as james so i'm going to go ahead and click on add request so this is going to create a new request in the hr help desk right so as a, a technician if I'm working on multiple such uh, requests in a day, or if I'm working on multiple hires as a, a HR uh, person, right? So I could uh, I could easily get confused if I do not have uh, the new hire's name in this particular list, right? Or it would be a tedious process to quickly to navigate to each and every single uh, request, view who the new hire is, and then. Um, take take necessary actions right so in this case uh, the new hires name is being appended with the subject right and that is being done by made by making use of um, a custom function so when you navigate to your 
let's say HR help desk. All right. And uh, when you navigate to uh, setup, you would you'd be able to view your custom functions under your developer space and custom functions, right? So uh, when you click here, you'd be able to view the list of uh, custom functions you currently have, right? So we do have a custom function, which is appending the subject with a new hire name, right? So this is actually being used in a business rule. So let me navigate to automation and business rules. And this is a service request, which we are talking about. So for the service request, we have created a rule which is employee onboarding append new hire. And whenever uh, a request is being created, it should um, you know, automatically uh, populate the new hire's name to my subject. So that is the custom function which we have written right here, right? So uh, the custom functions are, um, are uh, created or developed by making use of deluge which is our proprietary uh, language so you could uh, make use of uh, so if you have uh, any, any java developer in your organization you could definitely seek help from them and uh, create uh, custom functions by making use of deluge uh, deluge or you could also reach out to our support channel and uh, depending on your requirement we could also um, uh, you know we could also assist you with creating such uh, similar custom functions to meet your requirement right so uh, back to our use case so we have uh, uh, an onboarding process going on and uh, we have appended the subject by making use of a custom function and this is how it looks like right so when you navigate to uh, a request to the newly created request uh, and when you navigate to tasks right you'd be able to view the list of tasks which you have created so there are two tasks for hr one is uh, the orientation process uh, the second one is adding the users uh, to the to the hrms system right so as a hr technician i could go ahead and work on these two tasks i could complete the orientation for the new hire i could go ahead and add the user to the hrms uh, system and i could go ahead and close these tasks so once i close the tasks in the hr portal what happens is the next set of tasks should be triggered right so you have a configure email uh, and login ad a login in ad you have an asset uh, deploying phase and you also have um, a, a, you know the configuration of assets setting up the os and the softwares etc right so these are it related tasks and uh, these have to be managed separately how can you uh, send this to the it portal or the IT instance and have technicians work on this. So for this, you could have a custom menu. So once you have the custom menu, you could you would view an option like this. And from here, you could go ahead and click on the menu item. In this case, it's called trigger. And when you do that, it's going to uh, create a request in the IT help desk, right? So in your IT help desk, the last employee we onboarded was Sam. So we could navigate back to our HR help desk click on this particular custom menu and the custom item which is called trigger and that's going to execute a custom function and once a custom function is executed when you navigate to your hr uh, i mean to your it help desk and when you go to your requests page you'll be able to view uh, the request you have created for james right and this request would have the IT relevant tasks. So we had three tasks for IT and we are onboarding James. So when you click on tasks, you'd be able to view the three tasks populated right here, right? So how is this done? So you could navigate to developer space. So once again, it is set up. So under setup, under developer space, you have custom menu. So you could click on custom menu and you could choose custom menu for request and that's going to populate your custom menu option so you could either create or add a, a menu group a menu group meaning uh, this would be a group so this is your starting group and all the other options which follow under this are menu items so you could create a menu group right you could give a description you could enable or disable the group on the whole and you could also add in new items so once you have a group set you could add multiple items below that so when you click on new menu item you'd be able to uh, define your menu name enable it or disable it 
you could choose who should be able to uh, view this particular custom menu and who should access right so for that you have an option to choose associated roles so should it be all roles or should it be selective technician roles um, you know for example only sd admins should be able to trigger um, or only uh, a help desk config person or a technician should be able to trigger right so that type of uh, a restriction or a role definition can be given when you are configuring your menu items and uh, you could also say this menu applies to either all templates or just selected templates so you could choose your template from the list which is being populated and as uh, as you have in business rules and triggers you could also define your criteria so if you have a specific criteria you could define your criteria or you could say apply no condition and uh, under actions you could either invoke a url or you could uh, create a custom function right so uh, in this case um, we have a custom function uh, which is already in place and that's uh, what is creating a new request in the uh, it help desk from hr so this is how the custom function looks like so we get the uh, the information from the hr portal and we populate the relevant it related tasks in the it um, portal or the it instance right so this is being done by a custom function using custom menu so once you are um, you are in the it setup as an it technician uh, you could go ahead and configure the email for your new hire you could configure the assets and you could deploy your assets and software etc and uh, once all these are done you could go ahead and close the tasks and once you close your tasks in your it uh, environment or in your it instance your request on the whole would be marked as closed right so once you close your task your request is also being closed so this is being done by um, an automation so under setup you have automation and you have closure rules so when you navigate to closure rules you have an option at the very ending so we are uh, in a request we're talking about a request so when you scroll down you would have an option which says when all the associated tasks are completed move the request status to closed so you could choose between resolved and closed right here and you could also have an automated closing process as well depending on your requirement so that's how you automatically close out a request uh, in the IT portal or in any portal if you have your closure rules set up. So uh, in this case, we were talking about an employee onboarding for James and the status is now marked as closed, right? So when you navigate back to the HR help desk and when you go to the uh, requests uh, which we were working on in the HR uh, instance, you would notice that the IT related tasks would have also been marked as complete, right? So when you navigate to tasks, you would notice that these two were HR related tasks and we completed manually from here. And the other three which were IT related are being marked as complete as in when we finish a request or close a request right here, right? And that is also being done by the custom function as well. So uh, we do have one task which is remaining, which is set up the workspace for the new hire. So uh, this is a facilities related task. So let's quickly navigate to our facilities help desk. And when you navigate to your uh, facilities portal, and when you go uh, ahead to your request module, uh, you'd be able to view a similar request which is created for uh, James. So you could go ahead, uh, access the uh, new request which was created for your new onboarding or your new hire person. Uh, and you could navigate to task. You would find the setup workspace task in your facilities help desk. You could go ahead and trigger the task, uh, delegate the task, go ahead and work on this task and close it. And once this task is closed, once again, your request would also be marked as closed. And when you navigate back to your uh, HR uh, tab or your HR instance, and when you click on your tasks, right, or when you do uh, a quick refresh, you would notice that your tasks have also been marked as complete in this section, right? So let's do a quick refresh and see if the status is being changed right here. 
So we are back at the HR help desk. So our IT related tasks are closed. Our finance, uh, I mean, our facilities related tasks are also closed. And we did close out our HR related tasks earlier. And our request has been marked as closed automatically based on um, you know the list of tasks which were available. So this is how you could integrate various instances which are available in your service desk plus setup and uh, make use of custom functions and custom menu to build your ESM. So the last option which we are going to see for today is uh, Zia, uh, which is our AI assistant for service desk plus cloud. So um, Zia would study your data, which uh, is available uh, in your request, and it would automatically assign categories to your request, and uh, it would also suggest templates for you. So let's navigate to the uh, application as uh, an SD admin once again. So this is my Zia setup. Uh, when you scroll down, you would find Zia and uh, you would view the Zia chatbot alone as of now. Um, if you want to access this particular AI or artificial intelligence, uh, please reach out to our support channel and uh, we, we could enable it for you. So uh, Zia would predict the category and automatically assign. And when you're working on a template or when you're editing a template, depending on the data which you currently have uh, or depending on the historic data, uh, you, you can expect Zia to suggest a few templates depending on the uh, depending on a few keywords Zia learns automatically, right? So uh, let's say, for example, you navigate to uh, your request module and you initiate a new request, right? So um, let's say you want to install a new software. Right. So when you go ahead and click on new incident, you're going to say, uh, let's choose a particular, uh, you know, requester name. So my requester for today, let's say is OK, just a moment. All right. So my requester for today is uh, Cade. All right. So uh, I could go ahead and type in the subject as requesting to install Adobe Reader. Right. So if you have um, a few other, uh, you know, requests with a similar uh, keyword or a similar um, type of request, depending on what uh, or, or, or depending on the historic data, the category would be automatically assigned, right? So in this case, we are going to add a new uh, request for installing Adobe Reader. And when you click on add request, the category would be automatically populated. So once a request has been added, uh, you could navigate, uh, you know, all the way down to your category under your request detail section and you could view the category set as software from this section also under history you would be able to view uh, that the category was assigned by the artificial intelligence so that is also possible so you could go ahead and uh, work on a request and um, you know, expect the category to be automatically assigned. So this would be uh, beneficial for email uh, created requests. So mostly when requests are being created by email, there would not be any predefined values which are set for uh, various fields, right? So in order to predict a category and to automatically assign a technician, uh, this particular uh, artificial intelligence uh, option would be uh, very much useful for email created requests. So apart from the category prediction, uh, you also have one other option. So which is uh, when you click on uh, edit, right? So when you're working on any request, when you click on edit, uh, Zia would automatically suggest the type of, uh, you know, a template you would like to uh, use or which is commonly used for this particular type of uh, a request. Right. So uh, most uh, often what happens is whenever, um, uh, you know, the word install or whenever, uh, you know, Adobe Reader or etc. has been uh, is being used for multiple requests or when multiple requests are being created, uh, Zia studies it studies your historic request and it studies what categories and what templates have already been put in place. And depending on your choice of uh, um, of templates you've chosen previously, Zia would suggest your uh, desired template right here or your suggested template. So you could choose to uh, go ahead and uh, mark your template from here 
or uh, if you are working on um, a request uh, an incident request and if you want to convert that uh, request into a service request for example right so that can also be done and uh, suggestions would also be available for your service request uh, template so uh, let's say you click on actions and when you click on convert as service request uh, you would have uh, a dialog box and when you click on uh, select service template you can expect zia to populate uh, a suggested template right here right so if you have a predefined uh, you know uh, if you have created or converted such similar uh, incident requests into service request templates you can also expect uh, zia to populate suggestions uh, when you try to convert it as a service request so uh, these are the predictions and the suggestion options which you have as a part of the ai which we offer all right thank you so much everyone for tuning into today's uh, masterclass if you have any further questions uh, please feel free to reach out to our support channel and uh, we would always be happy to assist you so you could reach out to support or you could reach out to me or uh, you could always write to hello at servicedeskplus.com as well and we would uh, always be glad to assist you thank you so much everyone once again for tuning in you have a great day ahead thank you and bye bye